Come on, Tyler Nedrig. A spinner. I've crushed him here with a spinner, too. Oh, that's a, that, that's a fish. currently cramming everything into my backpack because where we are today we have to do a little bit of hiking so I want everything to be neat and tidy in my pack that way when you're carrying it on your back it's just a lot more stable and you don't have things flopping around and dragging you down so I think we are good to go here so let's get to fishing. I was, I was actually planning to fish somewhere else. And I was actually planning to fish a lake. But when I got to the lake this morning, the lake was still iced over and I don't have my ice fishing gear. So I had to reroute all the way back to the river. And as always, the river is open water. So we will be fishing the river today. Two rods for today. Good old bottom fishing rig and a spoon. That's all I brought. Looks like there's a couple boaters in this little cove. So perhaps that means there's fish. Water's a lot lower. Last time I fished the river, the water was really high but the water's definitely gone down a solid like 15 feet maybe. Which in my experience, when the water's low, the fishing tends to be better. I don't know what the deal is, but that just, like that just seems to be the deal. I like this log right here. And it seems like there's other people that have fished here before, but we'll just use this log because I can set my stuff on it and I can also sit down on it. So we'll start fishing here and just cast out so that over there is the main river this right here is a cove so we're gonna fish the mouth of this cove and we'll see if we can catch fish coming into the cove or going out into the main river the issue with sand is when you put your rod holder in your rod holder will just slide through the sand and it won't really hold so we're gonna put this rock right here Give it some support. Pull out my third camera here, which we will need. You guys already know the deal, man. We're just out here trying to catch a fish to eat. So power bait is a go-to. When it comes to power bait, there's a lot of different options out there. A lot of different colors. You have orange, pink, blue, red, chartreuse, neon, orange. Just a solid neon green with glitter and just a spring green and so many more variants of power bait. But my go-to typically ends up with these two colors. I've just built the most confidence out of these two because I just tend to catch more fish with these two colors. This is the red, white, and blue. And this is the rainbow color. I'm gonna go with the red, white, and blue simply due to the fact that last time when I was fishing with my buddy Steve we were catching trout on this color so we'll stick with the pattern and then my rig is pretty simple it's just a Carolina rig with a one ounce no roll sinker weight and I just have a treble hook right here so I guess I should show you guys what I'm rocking with here so I'm running 10 pound braid as my main line and then I have a one ounce no roll sinker I have my main line tied to a swivel and then I have about a three foot leader tied to that size 10 or 12 treble hook. And then I just have 
power bait on there. And the other trick is I'm not going to cast that far. I'm just going to give it a decent little cast. That's about 10 feet off the shore. But the thing I've noticed with these trout, especially in the winter, is these trout, they just cruise the shoreline. So they're not necessarily always gonna be farther out. I'm gonna check the drag. That's a really tight drag. Perfect. Just reel in the slack. Now you just gotta pay attention. We have our power bait rod all set to go. And while that power bait rod is sitting there waiting for a fish to come by, I'm gonna throw this spoon around. This is a orange spoon with a treble hook. And the reason why I can use two poles is because here you are allowed to use two poles if you purchase the two pole endorsement. We got some deer tracks walking along the shoreline. So let's see if there's a fish. We'll start here, and if we're just not getting much action, we will just slowly work along the shoreline until we do find a fish. This blade's spin's kind of funny. The spoon spins a lot weirder than I was anticipating. I thought it was gonna have a much more subtle action, but it's got a pretty like violent vibrating action. Like that's the design of a spoon, but some spoons vibrate more than others. This one, when I looked at it, it didn't look like it was gonna be a, a like a hectic vibrating spoon, but it is. Oh well more vibration, more attracting. And I'm just currently working it as if I'm working any other spinner, just casting and retrieving. I mean, it spins with good action. I just don't know if the fish are here. Today, the goal is one fish. That's all I'm asking, just one fish. Just one nice, river trout. I'm going to swap out this spoon for a panther martin. Toss this thing around and I'm just not really filling it with it. So We'll move back to a confidence bait, or in this case, a confidence lure, which is black and gold Panther Martin. Power bait rod hasn't gotten hit either, as far as I'm concerned. So it could just be a slow day of fishing. There's a boat that's shored up right over here, maybe like 200 yards down to my left. And uh, they haven't been seeing much action either. And there's a boat fishing right in the middle of this cove and it doesn't seem like they're doing hot either. So I'm just gonna tie this Panther Martin onto this rod using a uni knot. I use a uni knot for like 100% of my fishing. 
doesn't matter what it is from bluegills to catfish to sturgeon just be sure that whenever you're tying your knot always wet your line before you cinch if you don't wet your line before you cinch it that friction can damage your line mainly when you're using fluorocarbon and monofilament braid you can kind of get away with it but just to be safe i'd still recommend wetting your line we shall see if that panther martin will produce i also think i have like some of the weakest hands out there i can't do the cold without wearing gloves of some kind i'm just not very fond of the cold at least my hands aren't okay let's rock and roll with the panther martin I already like this Panther Martin a lot more than that spoon just because it's a little heavier so I can actually work the water better than the spoon because the spoon was so light every time I retrieved it all it did was it just came up to the surface which that's not what I want I want something like this Panther Martin where once I let it sink to a certain depth and I reel it it stays at that depth that's how you work the water in columns efficiently not just something that just comes back to the surface It's also just such a gorgeous day out here. So we're like down in a little cove kind of. And so when I was driving here, like I was driving on top of all this mist and fog or whatever you want to call this. But as I started dropping down to the river, like we're now under all of this mist and fog. But when I was flying my drone way up earlier, like you could see it was just bluebird skies and gorgeous sunny weather out. It's crazy how dropping down a thousand feet elevation can just change the entire vibe of the weather. A thousand feet up, it's bright and sunny out. A thousand feet down below to where we are now, it's just overcast. been out here for quite some time now I've yet to get a single bite more like a single hit on power bait or my spoon or my panther martin and my hands are getting cold so I'm gonna resort to two bottom fishing rigs that way I can just sit down and warm my hands up that rod has been there since the start just gonna launch it a little bit farther out than this one because this one's been pretty close to the shoreline and it's not producing so we'll cast this one a little bit further out and need to find a rock so i can set this rod up all right oh what was that what was that? Did a fish like bump into my line? My rod just, unless my eyes were playing with me, but I, I'm almost certain my rod like wiggled. Weird.
not surprised at all. Once again, this river has beat me. It's not over yet though, because I will be back out. So, I think I'm gonna switch spots, go try a slightly different area. Despite it being early February, spring is looking up because there's a lot of green grass that I can see now. A lot of the snow has melted. And I talked to one of the guys that walked by earlier. He used to work for these hatcheries and he told me that they typically release the fish in, in April. So right now is like as dead as it can be, which makes sense because winter fishing here can be pretty tough. So come spring, that's generally when everything picks back up again, but I ain't got two months to just do nothing. So we're out here trying. So I'm gonna move to a different spot and we'll see how that goes. I mean, just look at this though. Like despite not catching fish, like just spend a day out here looking at all of this, like it, it makes it all worth it. Where did you cast? Okay, I'm gonna cast right here. Let's hope this is it. We need to get over this drought. Oh, if these trout are biting like how they normally bite, it will be very obvious. Your rod's gonna be flying in the water so to speak. Well, I obviously have a guest today. Nate's here with me now. Made it back out to one of the lakes, open water, so we can actually fish. Downside is it's very windy, so it might be a little bit hard to distinguish a bite versus just the wind playing with the rods. Gonna give it a shot though. It's always a good time to be out here. I'm gonna tie on a net rig. A spinner. I've crushed them here with a spinner too. Oh, that's a, that, that's a fish. He's on, mate. I told you it's gonna be the best day or the worst day of fishing. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I told you, it wasn't even going to be a hesitation. Well, that took like a minute. Coming out here, I told Nate it's going to be the best day of fishing or the worst day of fishing. <laughs> that's a good fish too. Oh no, no. Oh, that's a good fish. Look at that. No way. <laughs> Look at that toad. Are you kidding me? I am not kidding you. <laughs> That's a toad. Let's go! Let's go! Oh my goodness. He swallowed it. Ah, yeah, keep an eye on your rod, Nate. Keep a close. He literally did. Half my rod was in there. We are just fishing stock trout, so these are nothing crazy, but first fish, Nate. Good old power bait. <sighs> That's my biggest trout of the year. Oh my goodness. Crazy. You see how they're spawning? Yeah. Yeah, but even, regardless if they're spawning or not, like I said, these are just stock trout, so it doesn't matter because new ones coming in here anyway. This is a buck, so this is a male. And so there's gotta be a hen in here somewhere. During this time of the year, they uh, cruise as pairs. That's a sweet looking fish. Oh, he swallowed it, so uh, let's bonk him. That's a good slab of meat, Nate. That's a, that's a big fish. It's a, <laughs> You're kidding me. Uh, all right, let's uh, no longer 
let them suffer and let's bonk them. That's him. This is probably like a 23, 24, might even be 25. Looks like a steelhead almost. So this is a buck because during the springtime when they get ready to spawn, bucks have a very pointy nose like this. Hens will have a much more like circular shape to them. This is a buck, which is a male trout. And like I said, he's getting ready to spawn because he's dripping here. But this lake where we're fishing today, it's just a stocked lake. Like fishing game comes, comes in here every year, stocked trout. And so it doesn't matter if these are reproducing or not because it, it doesn't matter. This lake is here for recreational opportunities. And Nay and I, we brought literally three, two grills and a stove, eggs, hash browns, and everything to cook up a trout. I brought my filet knife, so we're gonna eat good. Bonked him, so he's out. And uh, he swallowed my hook, so I need to find a way to get my hook back out and cast it back out there. <sighs> that was awesome. So again, we're just rocking a Carolina rig here. Size 16 treble hook with power bait. I'm on a streak of not catching trout, so I'm doing whatever I can to catch these fish. Yeah, this thing wasn't even stable. Oh my goodness. He just wanted that. Nice fish. All right, I'm gonna rig up my Ned rig. Hopefully, I don't, I don't get rudely interrupted again. If they're this active, Spinner's gonna crush it. If that's the only thing we get all day, it's all good. So. I got a Ned rig tied on here. There's my rod. There's Nate's rod on the power bay rod. And I caught my fish right there, left them on the ground. And because you can use two poles if you have the two pole endorsement, take advantage of it. That might've been a fluke, who knows? Good fluke. Good old power bait feeding these stock trout, what they grew up eating, just dough, power bait. So instead of just using power bait again, I'm gonna give them a Ned rig, try to imitate a crawfish, you know, a little bit more natural. Check the drag on this rod, it's a good drag. So I'm running 10 pound braid on this rod with a 10 pound monofilament leader, just to kind of hide the braid from these trout, because trout, once again, they're visionary fish, so they, they bite by seeing. That's why when you use power bait, that dough, the power bait dough floats up into the water column. That's why these fish can see it. If it's just on the bottom, sometimes these trout, they can't see it. And so you don't get bit. So the net rig is very simple to use. You cast it out, let it sink to the bottom and you kind of just hop it off off the bottom like this, just like how a crayfish would naturally. And one thing is you wanna work it all the way to you because what these trout will do sometimes is they'll see your Ned rig way out far and they'll just chase your Ned rig all the way to the shoreline and right when you're gonna pick it up, that's when they bite. So always when your Ned rig approaches the shoreline, always keep an eye out for fish that are chasing it. Don't be too hasty and just pull it out too soon. Yeah, when you're using like a spinner or a lure, make sure that you uh, work it all the way to the shoreline. Yeah. They'll chase it from way out there and I've had it happen too many times where I pull it out and I'm looking and there's a fish just like staring at it.
Yeah, I think it's a little too weedy for the net rig. Very, very weedy for the net rig. So I think we'll call it good on that. We're approaching springtime, so everything is greening up. All the weeds are growing, grass is growing. And like I said, you fish the net rig off the bottom, so he's just digging into all the weeds. So we're gonna cut this guy off and try something different. We swapped out the net rig for a black and gold panther martin. That way we can fish this guy up closer to the surface and up off the weeds. Oh, oh, oh. I just got three hits, dude. A fish came, swiped them, swiped it twice. That was like a 14 incher. I was like, why is my spinner like, it, cause you could feel it vibrating and then it would stop. And I'm like, what's going on? And then it was a fish. He's, yeah, I saw him. He came right here third time, right here. They're in here, man. <laughs> I don't know how he didn't get hooked, but they're chasing. That's a rookie move. So when you're reeling a panther marn like this, you can feel your blade vibrating. Whenever it just suddenly stops, that means that a fish comes and hits it, which throws it off its pattern and the blade's not vibrating anymore. I did that three times and I finally saw this fish right here. He chased it way out there too. Oh, no, 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 my rod, my rod, big hit. It's your, it's your rod now, you're watching those two rods. That was a... Did he get hit? Yes, that was a big hit, dude. Might have took the power bay, I don't know. Is that him? He, he's around there, he's toying with it. Missed him? Just reel it back. Uh, are you sure he's gone? Oh, he's on. Oh, he's on. That's what I thought. Let's go. All right. How does he feel? Big or? You think you, you think you could get him? Okay. Well, if you could get him, I'm not gonna come over. Hey, Nate, your rod, your rod fell over, bro. I'm coming. Dude. <laughs> oh, he's on. Yep, two fish. Let's go, Nate. Oh, this school of fish is here, Nate. <sighs> he's a good fish. Not, nothing giant, but just a good eater, man. Really? Dude, this is insane. 
I went and fished over there because uh, we weren't getting hit on the power baits. I looked at my rod. Dude, you should have saw that hit. I, like, I, like the rod was like this. <laughs> I was freaking out. And then this is on Nate's rod. Look at that double. That's what I'm talking about, oh, man. That's a beautiful. You fish. just gotta wait for the school to come back, yeah. and when they, when they come let's back, get the, let's get the rods back in the water. Yeah, this is all it is when it comes to trout fishing. Granted, again, we're, we're fishing stock trout. Even though they're stock, they still behave like a trout. And so, trout, they're school fish, so they like to roam together. So when it's dead, we had a period where there was no no bites. And I was kind of telling Nate, I was like, we just gotta wait for the school to come back. Once the school comes back in rods are just going to be going left and right i missed one that came and swiped my panther martin i looked at my rod going down you guys saw that nate came over here hooked him up i looked at nate's rod and his rod was on the dirt and hooked this one up too no i haven't yet he's the hook's still in there yep that's trout fishing right there i have been getting skunked you guys seen it this is what it's all about you fish until this happens don't give up I'm just gonna tie a single shank onto this one. If the single shank doesn't work, then we'll cut them open. I've done my fishing. Yeah, you have. I casted that one like way out there. This guy had a hump back to him. The one that yeah, was. Yeah, he does. <laughs> nice. Um. Oh, that's a beauty. That's the guy that owns it? No. Oh, oh, oh you're getting that. that's yours. That's oh, he's on, dude. Yep. Let's go. That was, you cast it close to the shore, too. Super what does he feel like? Net fish? Net fish. Net fish. Net fish it is. Dump these guys out on shore. It's probably a toad. All right, let's go. I'm reeling right in today, just so I don't get made fun of. <laughs> Hey, you were crushing it last time. That's a good fish. Oh yeah, he's right there. Right here. That's a great fish, man. Oh, man. It's a beautiful fish. <laughs> That's a hen right there. That's the hen. You said you weren't keeping anything under four pounds today. Yeah, I didn't know I Beautiful was I fish. at the time, I guess. No, you weren't. You you had no idea what you were in it store for. Be a joke. Well, it's reality now. Oh my goodness. Thanks. Yeah. Everybody loves stock trout, huh? <laughs> I'm gonna bonk her here. That's a hen. You see how bright the hens are? So if you look at the head, right, you see how like it's kind of just like a nose versus that guy where he's got like a really sharp hook to him. Bucks are really dark like that. Hens are really chromy. There's two fish. These are the two smaller ones. These are the two records for the day. So this is the first fish we caught. This was the one I caught. This is the one Nate just caught. And I want to take this time to just kind of show you the difference between a male and a female trout for those of you who are new. So a female trout is called a hen and a male trout is called a buck. This right here, especially when you're getting closer to the springtime when trout, rainbow trout are getting ready to spawn, they start to kind of, I don't know, just kind of change their body because they're getting ready to spawn. So bucks, males, which is this guy on top, they turn this really dark color, but it's still rainbow trout because you can see that streak of rainbow. But they turn really dark and the males, they have this hook. You can see their lower jaw has a very sharp hook to their mouth. That's a buck. If you look at a hen down here, she's way more silver, just like a chrome almost and if you look at her face she does not have that lower jaw hook like the buck and so that's like the easiest way to distinguish a hen versus a buck males they have a very sharp looking face and hens they have a much more rounded face and plus you can just look at the overall color and that'll tell you the difference so we got plenty of trout to eat but here we do have a limit of five fish. Nate has two, I have two, so we both have three to go. Yeah, so all I do is I just take my knife and I just go from the anus here. 
can just cut up. Look at all the eggs. Crazy. Yeah. So again, like these these trout are just stock, so it's not like we're hurting the quote unquote conservation of these trout. Yeah, these two fins right here, they had, there's always that little cartilage, so you kind of have to use more energy. And plus, I'm not I don't usually do this for big trout. I do this for like 12 inch, 14 inch rainbow trout. It's but amazing how their bodies are built for like breeding. Like it is. How empty she gets after you. Yeah, I mean it's just all eggs, right? You yeah. saw that, right? And so once you do the anus all the way to here, take your blade and go through this crevice right here. Just poke it out, cut it open. And then from here, I just want to make sure that I'm not going to get hooked and just basically tear this. You see how when you tear that, yeah. and then now you just kind of hold this. Don't get hooked. Yeah, I'm not I'm going to try not to get hooked. But then from here, you just kind of pull. I'm being very cautious because there's a hook in here and I'm trying not to get hooked. But anyway, the process is once you get here, you're just gonna pull. And when you pull, these two front fins are gonna come off with it. And then all the guts and everything come out as one. And there's your gut pile. And the hook is in there somewhere. And then you just have to go in here and you see this dark line, yeah. just smush it out. But it's so hard because these fish are much bigger than what I'm used to. So we'll take a knife and yeah. we'll just cut it out. And then once you do that, you can cut off the head and smush the blood out, rinse it off, and the fish is ready to go. I don't know how well of a job I did there because I was trying to show Nate. But it's very simple. I've done this process like a million times with trout. Usually don't do them with fish this size. I usually just fillet fish this size. But Nate wanted to see me clean it how I normally clean it. So we're doing it with a trout like that. Oh, oh, Nick, that's a fish. He's on. Oh, oh, hold on. He let go. He's got to be on. Five feet from shore, four foot leader. That's the secret. How does it feel? Uh, not as big as the last one. Ah, uh, that's a... Nice. <laughs> I'm getting outfished. Look at all those head shakes. Oh, look at that. Feisty. <laughs> Yeah, baby. How do you like this lake? That's, it's not say, bad, huh? Can't say much bad about it. No. <laughs> Look at that! Such nice, a that's nice a buck. gorgeous. A yeah, that's that's buck. a beautiful buck. I'm surprised how uh, bright and chrome he is. Oh. That's a buck right there because of his uh, stout nose. He's just very chrome, like a hen almost. He just hasn't turned really dark yet. He's probably just not as far in his stages like mine. Gorgeous. Oh, whoa, whoa. Dude, you are killing it. <laughs> oh, that's a big one. Jeez, Mr. Trout Slayer. Where's the net? Oh, that's a big fish. That's a toad. Chartreuse glitter. Oh, look at him doing all those spins. <laughs> oh, that's a toad, Nate. Another hen. 
You are smashing Ooh. it on the glitter. It's what? Glitter doing all the work. Glitter's doing the work. Why change, right? You got him on the side of the lip too. I'm surprised he didn't swallow that. Or she. She. <laughs> Holy moly. What a beautiful fish. <laughs> Wanna cool. go uh, do business, huh? What? You want to go do business? No, I was just, I was just taking a leap. You were just, yeah, you were doing business. Like, oh yeah, I was looking. I was like, please, no hit. <laughs> then the fish is like, oh, wish not granted. Learned my lesson. Uh. And once again, that's like a two-minute fish. Yeah. Nate is crushing it on the chartreuse color power bait with the glitter. I've been sitting here with the sherbet color. <laughs> Nothing's going on. Oh, I have uh, paper plates too. Oh, A lot of paper plates. Unless I did the classic, take it out for something and say I got it. We're getting ready to cook, so. Just got some garlic pepper and we're just going to sprinkle this all over the trout. This is a big trout. This is a lot of meat to go around. Make sure you get the inside as well. Did I? Yeah. I'm afraid my power bait might have just fell off. <laughs> this is the downfall of using a single shank hook for a power bait. Yeah. It doesn't stick on. Oh well, if he's around, he'll hook himself. This may be the biggest fish I've ever thrown in aluminum foil for this grill. That's with the head off too. Yeah, that's with the head off. He would not have fit. I do have a bell pepper here. I don't know if it's still good. I guess you could cut this guy open too. Yeah, I can. Really Sweet. Perfect. Work. Yep, it worked. And now, I'm just gonna put this thing right like this. Beautiful. I'm gonna grab that pot from the top of it. The lid? No, there's a pot. Man, you really brought your whole kitchen. Yes, I did. So what Nate's making here is he's making gramolata. This is lemon zest. He's got and cilantro. Garlic in there too. Oh, garlic and lemon zest. He's got cilantro there. Parsley. Oh, parsley. I don't know my veggies. <laughs> we got parsley there. And we're just gonna dabble a little bit of oil. Mix it around, throw in some seasoning. I only have garlic pepper. And then once that trout is done cooking on the grill, just top this on top of the trout. That's our meal. Trout's too big for the grill, so we'll have to cook in portion by portion. Rods are right here. I'm actually going to reel in and check my rod. Said I got a hit earlier. Oh, I have a fish on here. You do? I did. I think I, I broke off, I think. 
He was on. <laughs> what? Oh my goodness, he just, my line snapped. Oh, he was on there. The whole time. The whole time. Oh. Uh, how did my line break? Well, my mono broke on the swivel, which means that the line broke close to the bottom. So there was probably some rocks in there that just cut it. Oh, he was on there the whole time. That hurts. <laughs> I knew I saw it get hit hard. But it's like, like, did he really just bite it and just like stay in one spot? That's weird. And like, he never moved the rod again. <laughs> That's just weird. That's now I have to retie. It's probably done. <laughs> what? It's probably done, but I'm just gonna leave it in there. I want all that onion to just melt, seep into the meat. Okay. Is there two flames? No, it, the flame's like this. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. It's just that I, I wanted to cook the tail, but I'm just gonna go back to this, keep it all warm. And then we could just leave it on the grill and turn mm -hmm. it to like low. Mm -hmm. Just peel it down. I brought forks too. Perfect. I have uh, plates as well. gonna take a couple of flipping because I have like four aluminum foils. You had to. Oh, oh my I think goodness. I screwed it up. Skin's attached. Oh buddy, look at these onions just perfectly melted away. Do you want a little lemon over it? Do it. Gramolata on this trout that we just stuffed with onions, seasoned. We're no professional chef, but no complaints. No complaints. We got bell pepper there as well. More lemon if we want it. Let's chow down, man. This is what we're talking about. You come out to a lake like this, don't really know what to expect. Beautiful weather considering it's winter. Fish are just hammering. Can't be more blessed than this, man. This is a blessed morning. I just got back uh just got back from Portland yesterday. Nice. Father God, we thank you for this day just to come out here to enjoy uh, another day of fishing. I thank you for allowing Nate to come out here and for us to just fellowship with one another, enjoy each other's company. Thank you for the fish. As we eat this food, I pray that it'll nourish our body and just allow us to be safe and allow us to get, get back home safely to our families, Lord. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. amen. Let's chow down. My goodness. It was like salmon. Orange, huh? Good. Mm-hmm. Did the onions do anything? I think the onions are so much meat. I think the onions are on the back side, That's so the okay. the other side will get there. Oh my goodness! Dude, this is so good. So again, this is called gremolata. Very simple, just chopped parsley, chopped garlic, lemon zest, a little bit of oil, and just salt, and then you top it. We discovered it about a year ago. Yeah, <laughs> literally about a year ago. February last year. Dude, like the warmth just like goes so fresh. <laughs> you can definitely tell the meat on these fish are a lot more uh, hearty. Mm -hmm. It's not as flaky as like a small fish. No. Like you, you like you have to chew it. Mm -hmm. This is like the equivalent of going to a restaurant and ordering like a slab of salmon. And like, you're just, bass. like you're, you're just eating it. Yeah. But this is better because- This is way better. You, you caught it. I'd rather eat it here than 
at a table in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. That's the skeleton. All the meat, most of the meat, cleaned off. There's just something about adding greens to your dishes. It just makes it look so much better. Oh yeah. Oh man. Now we got onions too. That is a dish right there. Onions, gremolata, trout that was swimming in the water like two hours ago. You guys picked up eggs at the store? Four dollars a dozen. My wife and I are getting chickens in a couple weeks. Nice. We're super Dude, they're so fun to raise, dude. They're, I love raising chickens. We had chickens. chickens my whole childhood. They were so fun. Nah, I stopped in 2017, I miss them. They just give you something to do. Mm -hmm. When you're bored, oh, I'm gonna go feed my chickens. The weather has rolled in once again, but I think we can call it a day. No complaints. Six beautiful trout. Should have been seven, but my line snapped off when I was uh, retrieving it. No complaints, it's been a blessed day out here. It's good to see Nate as always, but the fish just elevated this trip that much better. We just got done eating a delicious lunch. Weather's rolling in, so we're gonna wrap it up here. I really appreciate you guys watching this one. I know it's a longer one, but I wanted to show the struggle and then the success. Keep on fishing, never give up. See you in the next one.